WC9 News at 5 begins with continuing coverage of the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. Live images right now from Sky 9 over the scene. In the past 30 minutes, we learned that six construction workers missing since that bridge collapsed more than 15 hours ago are presumed dead. Our assignment desk has calls into MDOT NTSB Governor Westmore's office about those workers that are now presumed to be dead. This video shows the moment the busy roadway came crashing down. It is dramatic video. It is just like watching a bunch of toothpicks crumble, and that's what you're going to see here, the moment of impact. The bridge crumbled in the, into the Patapsco River around 1.30 this morning after that cargo ship slammed right into it. Officials say the ship was experiencing power issues at the time. And we have new reporting this hour on the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Thank you for joining us. I'm Simone D'Alba. And I'm Larry Miller. Let's get you caught up on three things that you need to know right now. Here's the newest information. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect the Congress to support my effort. First, President Biden has vowed to use federal funds for the recovery and rebuilding efforts. He called on Congress to support those efforts and promised the people of Baltimore that the federal government will be with them every step of the way. Second, the Port of Baltimore remains closed at this hour. More than 100 vehicles pass under the bridge every single day. And right now, the traffic there remains at a standstill. And third, the FBI says there is no credible evidence that terrorism played a role in today's events. If you're not familiar with the area, Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge is part of Interstate 695. The Port of Baltimore is just north of where that bridge used to stand. Nearly 35,000 vehicles cross that bridge every single day. It is a major artery. Mm -hmm. We have team coverage of every angle of this bridge collapse from reaction from first responders to the community feeling the impact of this tragedy. Yeah, we want to begin with our Scott Broom tonight. He's live near the Maryland Transportation Authority headquarters with the latest information from officials. It looks like Scott, uh, the, those missing construction workers presumed dead, according to the Associated Press. Yeah, the attempt to recover these individuals is the primary focus, it remains the focus. There were, by the way, two survivors who somehow survived this calamity, and it's unclear exactly how that happened. You uh, did a good job of summarizing a lot of what's happened in recent hours, but I wanted to add to Nas National Transportation Safety Board, uh, Jennifer Homedy, the chairman, said uh, that the investigation is going to include looking at a uh, the equivalent of a flight recorder that's on the ship. Pete Buttigieg, the transportation secretary, calling this bridge a cathedral of American infrastructure, saying it will not be quick and it will be very expensive to replace it. But the governor, Westmore, putting the focus on the people who are missing as a region, a state, and the nation reacts to this. The 985-foot container ship Dolly sent out a mayday call, then slammed into the 47-year-old Francis Scott Key Bridge at 1.30 in the morning, where the steel structure dropped like a broken toy, tossing road crews working on the bridge and uncounted vehicles into the water. Six people are reported missing, and two were rescued in the moments after the crash, authorities said. Residents near the bridge described a rumble in the night. Felt like an earthquake. It just shook really bad. I felt the house move like something had crashed or something. It was like 9-11. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating early reports the ship may have lost power and control. Right now it's about people. It's about uh, families uh, and uh, Addressing the needs of those that were impacted, that's the focus. Maryland Governor Wes Moore credited police on both sides of the bridge for stopping traffic quickly, though authorities report sonar has detected vehicles in the water more than 50 feet deep and may not have a full accounting of motorists who may have been crossing. To the victims of this tragedy and their loved ones, all of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you. And we will always be thinking of you. It's a disastrous blow to the port of Baltimore, an economic engine which last year handled a record 52 million tons of foreign cargo worth $80 billion, according to the state. Reopening the port may take months or more. And Baltimore area residents talked about losing a vital transportation link for possibly years to come. And I'm in disbelief. It's just, you know, it's just un un uncomprehensive to even believe the bridge is gone.
Rescue and recovery operations are continuing out on the water here at the bridge. We've just seen mobile office space being brought in, heavy equipment being brought in as the long road to recovery begins here at the foot of the key bridge in Baltimore. In Baltimore, Scott Room, WUSA 9, back to you. And certainly our hearts and thoughts are with all of those that have been impacted by the events of today. Scott Broom, thank you so much.